Hey everyone, so it's been a minute since I've made like a little video, blog, vlog, whatever you want to call them and stuff like that. Uh, but I wanted to put something up there for you guys today. And one of the things I was uh, thinking about is like, you know, I've been flipping out pedals here and there pretty regularly. Just, um, it's just one of the things I do pretty often and stuff like that. But there are common things that I'm always looking to have on like my pedal board and stuff like that and like you know like, I, I'm, I'm a real uh, pedal junkie when it comes to just looking for different types of gear and different sounds and different combinations of stuff so I wouldn't want to say every gig but definitely uh, close to like every week I'm reconfiguring like pedal boards and this and that just to kind of figure out you know what is it that I really like and this and that now at this point I pretty much have an idea a strong idea as to what I like but uh, these are pretty much like mainstays that usually are always with me to a certain degree um, you know so like uh, there's certain gigs that require different sounds and this and stuff like that obviously like you know if you're a gig musician you know exactly what you need for the most part uh, especially like a bassist stuff like that like uh, there's not too many uh, chances we get to experiment with different sounds but when you do you really want to like have like a great tone and stuff like that and that's really important to me as well just to kind of have that uh variety in what you're doing so what i have uh today is like i was saying before uh common pedals that usually are always with me when it comes to uh certain types of gigs and stuff so uh one of the main things i would definitely want to start off with with just kind of going through with this is just kind of like doing certain sounds that I really like out of these specific pedals uh, and I hope that maybe like you guys enjoy it as well maybe you, you pick one up or you, know, you try it out and just experiment with it you know it's just different suggestions and different sounds to kind of go with um, you know I'm not gonna go in any specific order with this but I mean like obviously if, like, if we're gonna go in the order of like the pedal chain itself it would be you know I'm going in directly into my tuner here uh, from there into my volume, and then from my volume, I'm going right into uh, my OC2, which this one is just obviously like uh, the octave pedal for bass players. We all can agree to that this is like the nicest one for going an octave down. Um, there's other oct there's different uh, octave pedals when it goes to like going for the octave up type sound, like for like solos and stuff of that. In that situation, I typically use a sub and up pedal. Uh, so that one sometimes does get swapped out for uh, the, if, depending if I want to go up an octave or for most situations and most bass players we want to go an octave down especially if we're playing with a, like a four string bass and we want to be able to hit like a low D or some or a low C even um, tracking sometimes is an issue with that pedal but I really like this setting right here where I have the octave one all the way up I have my dry signal about like I would say two thirds of the way, and then the octave two completely down. Like so, there's no octave two uh, down there. Uh, the next one over here, this is uh, the micro synth from Electro Harmonics. This is a really crazy uh, pedal, and this one has so many different varieties and sounds, especially with all the different faders and stuff. That you can really kind of like craft a really cool uh, signal out of this. Uh, and it still has a super deep low end, so you don't sacrifice the low end for that synthy kind of a sound. Um, from there, it goes into really basic type things, so just like a, a real basic uh, delay, basic reverb, and then I'm going into my preamp over here, which this is uh, the Spectre Drive from TC Electronics. Now this one kind of doubles as both like the preamp uh, and also my drive pedal. Sometimes I use an actual uh, Big Muff for when it comes to these things, but uh, lately I've been using just like the drive switch on this, and there's this uh, uh, tone print that's setting on here, which uh, go it turns into like kind of like a Big Muff uh, emulator almost. Uh, I think it's called like a Biff Mug, I think it's called or something, but like it's actually a really great uh, like sound. You do lose a little bit of the low end, but it's not like a terrible loss. Um, and then from there it just goes right into uh, the amp and there's also a DI on this as well so sometimes if I'm um, playing like a bigger venue or something like that I just have them pull it right out from the board instead of the amp and that's kind of convenient as well just so that way there's less wires running all over the stage and stuff so that's pretty much my signal chain and I just want to kind of show you what my dry signal is versus my preamp signal uh, you can see here I have the bass turned down a little bit because this pedal itself is rather bassy uh, my trebles are right at noon and then I have my low mids pretty far up but like I would say maybe like a little over two-thirds 
and then my uh, high mids is uh, three quarters of the way turned so that one's real high up in there uh, this one also has compression built into it so I have this a little more than a quarter turn there and I typically have the gain right at noon and then the volume get or the, the, yeah, the volume level can kind of be like somewhere between like right around here like a third or something like that to like noon and so and right now the the amp is set completely flat so like you can kind of get an idea for just how nice of a signal I can get out of just uh, this pedal alone you know and then if you think about that with the fact that it also has a dry pedal it's really kind of like two or three pedals in one which is really convenient so here's a dry signal I go to turn on the preamp it really thickens up the sound and it sounds real nice when that happens um, messing around with some of the knobs you know, like I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with that just because like it this is the sound that I typically like to use uh, and then I will also then tweak it from the amp kind of similar layout where I'll boost the mids turn down the bass and kind of leave the treble somewhere around noon and then now I'm getting a much more clear cut kind of signal and that sounds real nice then just for a clean bass signal that way uh, the overdrive no. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Definitely has that muff kind of sound. Sounds pretty uh, thick and gnarly as well. So I really like having that already on the pedal. So that way, if uh, I really wanted a very basic pedal. Uh, pedal board or just like not really bring a pedal board with me just have something that a little bit of variety in there I can just bring the preamp. It's perfectly fine um, But yes, so that is my initial tone So this is where everything's kind of based off of for when it comes to the other effects That's why I wanted to go through that one first before going back to uh, the OC2 and stuff So here's the OC2 with the preamp on so Now I don't typically go below this C right here just because they, any further down it starts getting real muddy and the tracking starts to get lost. And same thing with kind of going up too high. When you start going too high with that pedal the same kind of thing will happen when you start losing some of the tracking and the octave will start to displace. It'll go real high and go low and it just it gets real messy. Maybe you're into that. You know, I, Maybe that's your thing. I don't know. But uh, for me this is the setting that I like the most. Now some of you know that I play in a uh, Radiohead tribute band, uh, Climbing Up the Walls, and one of the effects that we use for the song, Climbing Up the Walls and um, All I Need, and uh, a couple other different songs off of uh, In Rainbows, and uh, also even uh, Moonshade Pools, like uh, we use, or I, I use, uh, the bass micro synth pedal. And this thing gives me some really gnarly synthetic sounds without losing the low end, and I love it. So this is uh, the effect that I pretty much use for like uh, the song Climbing Up the Walls. And uh, this one, it just sounds so gnarly and awesome. And like there's this little bit of like a wah kind of sound happening there and that's because of these frequency faders and I really like the fact that I can kind of control how big of a wah I want or how little I want like um, for when I do songs like kind of like all I need I kind of kind of try and keep it fairly flat and like a lower frequency so that way it doesn't really move too much it more, becomes more like a bass synth. Like. like a really high pitched kind of like a, or just a higher uh, frequency just move the faders up together
Now typically I'm just keeping it down low, but you can also change these to where it just goes down. It's however you want to set the frequency, it's really awesome. I usually like going up though when I do this, so we can kind of... And you can adjust how fast it does all of these different effects and stuff like that. Um, some of these are sold used with like faders broken and stuff like that. I recommend just buying one new or uh, finding one that's used in great condition. Eh, whatever. But these are the two real uh, effect effect pedals that I, I use off for just some of the weird stuff. And then besides that, just real basic, you know, delay. And, and a lot of people overlook delay when it comes to playing bass. Like, like delay is fantastic. <laughs> pretty and it sounds awesome and then of course reverb you can't go wrong with reverb it's just one of those pedals you, you should have it for like different types of sounds and if you watched my video on how to do uh, uh, the the bowing bass effect for uh, electric bass you need to have a reverb pedal and a volume pedal to kind of make those two things um, work together and make that effect and that that's why I keep those two usually always on the board for ballads and slower songs where a, a bowing sounds really helps out a lot. So, those are the main effects that I usually always have on my board. Uh, things get rotated out here and there. It really depends on what kind of sound I'm going for and what the gig really requires of me. But, uh, if I had my choice, I would probably have all of those constantly on the board and then I would bring out uh, additional little things here and there. But don't be afraid to try out different pedals and different effects. Have fun with it. Uh, these are like some of my favorites. You know, Comment let me know what some of your favorite pedals are uh, and maybe I'll check them out. Maybe I'll do a video on them or something like that. That'd be fun. Alright guys, take care.